Now up here against the ceiling is a very interesting aircraft. Uh, what this is called is a very easy. It was designed by Burt Rutan and it's notable for a couple of things in particular. First it's a what they call a canard aircraft which basically means that the wings in the back and you have uh, the canard airfoil out front. Canard is uh, French for duck. I suppose the French think these kind of planes look like ducks. And uh, it's also notable that it's uh, one of the early uh, aircraft that uh, used composites uh, in the uh, airframe, uh, fiberglass and those sorts of things. So uh, also the uh, Rutan brothers are notable in that they designed and flew the first aircraft to fly around the entire globe without refueling. They did that back in the 80s. One thing I really like about this air museum is that uh, you're constantly surprised and this really surprised me. This is called a Baby Great Lakes. Uh, I get all the aviation magazines and I've been seeing these for years in the magazines but I never realized how small they really are. It's a 40 percent scale of the uh, Great Lakes which was popular back in the 1930s. It's an aerobatic aircraft. This is also fully aerobatic and it's called the Baby Great Lakes. Just one of the things that you'll see here at the Mid-America Air Museum. Next what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about the regulation that uh, uh, controls what an ultralight aircraft is. Powered parachutes and fixed wing, uh, all, all the uh, what we call ultralights are uh, governed by this rule called FAR or Federal Air Regulation 103, FAR 103. So let's talk a little bit about that now. Powered parachutes are classified as ultralights. As we found out earlier, ultralights are considered by the United States Federal Aviation Administration to be recreational vehicles that can fly. FAR 103, the federal air regulation that defines what an ultralight is and the limitations of its legal use, is fairly straightforward. You received a copy of it on paper with this tape, so you can review all the particulars, but here are some of the high points. Number one. An ultralight vehicle is only meant for one person. Number two, it can only weigh 254 pounds or less. Number three, it can only carry five gallons of fuel. And number four, in straight and level flight with full power, it can go no faster than 55 knots calibrated airspeed. That translates to about 63 miles per hour or typical highway driving speeds. If you stay within the requirements of FAR 103, you do not need a pilot's license or a medical certificate, but please remember, you need to learn the art of flying before you leave the ground in one of these vehicles, or you almost certainly will get hurt. I have also created this animation to help you understand how powered parachutes are controlled in the air. Please note that the depiction of the cables, attachments, and canopy are greatly simplified. To start with, remember that the canopy is just like any other wing or lifting surface. As it moves through the air, it generates a lifting force that overcomes gravity. What is different about powered parachutes is that they use a pendulum type action to change the pitch or angle of attack of the wing in order to climb or descend. In order to climb, you increase thrust over your straight and level cruise setting. This will have the effect of advancing the trike ahead of the canopy. Then due to the pendulum action of the entire system, the canopy wing will have an increased angle of attack. This combined with the increased power setting will cause the entire apparatus to climb. If we then reduce settings back to cruise power, the apparatus will return to straight and level. Reducing power even more will cause a descent. Now from the rear we will see how the powered parachute accomplishes a turn. In order to turn, a PPC uses a method somewhat similar to that employed by flying wing aircraft. The trailing edge, in this case the left one, is warped down. The net effect of this warping is increased drag on the left side of the wing and a yaw to the left. The aircraft turns left. 